by the way, because we Tim kind of surprised me. Like he, I mean, I knew we were gonna record on a Wednesday or we were gonna try, but I look over at my phone and it's like eight fifteen. Tim's like, "You ready?" I'm setting up, and I'm like, "Oh crap! I totally forgot." So. I wasn't even going to do my hair. I didn't know what it looked like because I had already taken a shower. And I came out and my hair was like, it looked like I was straight from a JRPG. Like it was like yeah. up in the back, down in the front. And then I tried to adjust it. But now you got this, I don't know what this is. You know, hey, can you, hey watching. hang on. Can you, can you go out of screen and then pop in and tell me that you discovered a new recipe? <laughs> <laughs> I have a new recipe. Who is your daddy? I am the father. You fathers will understand. My father taught me many things here. I got an idea. How about you all sit there quietly while I make dad noises? Well, here we are with episode 92. We are recording a little early. I did throw a monkey wrench into things, and one of the things about our show that I think a lot of listeners can relate to is that we are... Uh, not only gamers, but we are also dads, as we've talked about. You know, we've got wives. We're trying to figure out how to balance all this stuff. And just in in my family schedule, Wednesday nights have become far and away the best night for me to record. Anything else can cause some, drama. oh, let's say dis, yeah, let's say drama, let's say discord. So we can still do it on the weekends. We're gonna try out some midweek recordings here and there, just to you know cut me a break every once in a while. You know. So we'll try it out. That's why this week's a little different, because we just recorded like three days ago. Yeah. So for our last episode. And so there's not a ton of stuff that we've been playing that's new. Derek has a few things. Um, but uh, we also want to take time to take a look at this year's console exclusive. So that's really what this episode's going to be about. Um, I'm going to try to give you some, bro- some breakdown numbers. I'm going to finish up the, yes, my nerdy spreadsheet here. Because yeah. I've got some totals that I want to share, just to kind of put it into perspective. You know, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo are three main competitors. We're going to, I might mention PC and handhelds, but for the most part, I'm considering the Switch, Xbox One, and PS4 as direct competitors. And we're going to take a look at how they've done this year with console exclusives, including the ones that we expect to arrive or that have been announced for this year, assuming nothing gets delayed these last three months. I think so, we should be good on yeah. not having to deal with delays. I think we're too late for that. I think so, too. I mean, you never know. Like, some of the November, Maybe some of the late December November, game. early December stuff. Yeah, like, I, I don't think it will happen, but something like a Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is one of those types of games that could get pushed back. I don't think it will. I think that game's done. Well, I'm just saying. If, they didn't, have, if they didn't have that Nintendo Direct, then I would still say, yeah, there's a chance. You know, it's really not going to yeah. come out in December. Yeah. Now that they devoted an entire Nintendo Direct, it's coming I would out in the be first. in shock. Yeah. Like, it's coming out in the first. They got shocking. special editions all yeah. over the place. It, it's it's coming. They made too out. many that's, announcements about that game. Yeah, that that thing's coming out, yeah, which is great. Thing. I'm I'm pumped for that one. So we'll get to all of that. Um, and so, but before we do that, let's talk about stuff that we are playing. And uh, I'll just say real quickly, the only game I've played since we last talked is Golf Story. That's the only game I've played. It's what uh, I do, it's, Derek. What Tim? <laughs> it's. It's all it's, it's all I played. So it's golf store, there. <laughs> I mean, you are missing out, my friend. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my ground on this one. This game is so fun. I am now on level uh I wanna say twenty nine. I've put about seventeen hours into it. It is legit an RPG just in terms of the depth of it, the story. Well, I shouldn't say the depth of it, but the story, the the length, the uh the um the number of characters you meet, the number of storylines, silly though they may be at times. Uh, it is definitely an RPG length experience. Great value for 15 bucks. So I'm really still enjoying that. Thank you to those of you who listened to me, not like Derek, and it sounds like a few of you have gone out and bought it or you're planning to buy it this week. Good. It's a fantastic game. Even, tell you what, let me say one more thing about it and then I'll shut up about it. Mm-hmm. If you like If you like golf games... Then, if nothing else, this is a really fun golf game. You can do the story mode, or you can hop straight into a match and play the courses. If you like golf games in and of itself, this is a great fifteen-dollar, cool-looking, fun-to-play golf game on the Switch. There you go. That's the last thing I'll say about it. It is on my game of the year list for sure. Derek, what about you? Yeah. What have you been playing? Now that you wake up, now wake up. I know you fell asleep during that little golf story. Speech. No, I I'm done. told I told the listeners last week, and I meant it. That while I'm not going to go out and buy that right now, I'm definitely looking to... I'm sorry, I'm typing right now, but it's it's just... Rude. 
Uh, yeah, I'm being rude, but it's I totally forgot to put battle chasers in, so I wanted to download while we record. All right, so I uh, oh, so you're you're oh, wait, hang on, real quick, you're getting are you did you just buy battle chasers? I bought it. Um, I got an email from Green Man Gaming. They'll send me stuff all the time, like, hey, you got a 25% coupon if you apply it towards these certain games, and one of the games was Battle Chasers. So okay. I ended up paying 22 bucks for it, which I felt was perfect. I was waiting for it to drop to 20 um, Not that 30 is a bad price for what apparently this game is, but I figured if I can get it pretty much on day one for $2 more, why not just do it? So there I just go. bought Battle Chasers. No, I have not tried it because I'm actually just downloading it to Steam. So for those who have PCs and are actively gaming on PCs like Rudy and... Uh, Jose and some other of you uh, of you guys um, sign up for Green Man Gaming because every once in a while I always buy from CD Keys, but every once in a while Green Man Gaming will send me and they'll send it to you obviously coupons and they drop prices on new games, so it's real nice. Um, nice. But as far as what am I playing, I'm gonna make this quick. I'm not gonna go over stuff I've already played. I'm just gonna tell you the new stuff. Uh, I came home from work today and booted up the beta for Battlefront 2. Um, I didn't play long. I just played for a little bit just to kind of see what it looked like, what it felt like. It looks amazing, though I know Tim's going to get mad at me. I'm playing on the regular Xbox One, therefore it actually looks bad. Like The, the game looks good, but the, the lack of P's does look bad, and it's very noticeable. And again... <laughs> I know people you, are mocking wait, me. I know I sound say like a the snob. Lack I'm self-aware. I'm self-aware. Oh but okay. I have right. to say, when you are used to seeing 4K, which is nothing but crisp screens, and then you try to go down to 900p or 720p, the game looks terrible. So what I'm trying to say is it looks terrible now. I know when the 1X comes out, it will look fine. Um, and it is actually a very beautiful game. Plays good. Looks like it's going to have a lot of options, a lot of modes, so I'm actually really excited for Battlefront 2. But I did get the sense while I was playing it, I was like, man, this really feels like Battlefield 1. Like I just felt like I was playing Battlefield 1 in Star Wars. So, mm. if you like Battlefield, then you'll like Battlefront. If you don't like Battlefield, you might like Battlefront just because you're a Star Wars fanboy. But other than that, stay away, because that's what it's going to be. Um... Well, I would guess that many of our listeners played the first one. It mm -hmm. went on such a deep, steep sale the first time around, right? Or do you think many people skipped it? I mean, you can literally buy the full package. I know Jesse White just did this like a week ago. You can buy the game and all of its DLC for $5. That's crazy. So I actually own the game on every single system because I ended up buying it every time like when it was like 5 7 bucks. I was like, oh, I'll just buy it on my PC, or I'll just... I had it on Xbox on day one, and then I ended up buying it on the PS4 to play with, play with the, the teenagers at, at church. That's awkward. But um, <laughs> I bought it there, and then I bought it on PC later when I got my computer. But yeah, it's it's super cheap, and it's a, it's a fun game. But this one, I think, is going to have more. Not only just more as far as single player, but it's going to have a lot more uh, multiplayer content. Uh, gotcha. The other stuff I'm playing is Forza 7. Uh, I was on the, I was honestly on the fence on whether I should buy it or not, and then I kind of just justify it by figuring it out on how to get it for $22 out of my own pocket, and I was like, mm, yeah, this game's worth 22 bucks. So I bought Forza 7, and I actually really like it. Like, it's Forza, so if you don't like sim racers, you're not going to like it. But there's some stuff that they're doing with this game that I already like better than the previous Forza game. So it's definitely going to be a cool like game I'll just jump into every once in a while. It's not one I bought that I was like, i got to beat every cup and I've got to unlock every car. No, I'll just play it for fun every once in a while and then just enjoy it on my PC and on uh, my Xbox One X when I get that. It's just going to be a pretty game that I can play. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is uh, I found out today that The Witcher 3 was getting a PS4 Pro update. Might as well uh, give the shout out to where the shout out is due. Who was it that told you? Uh, Dan Phillips. There you go. Yeah, Dan Phillips is the one that posted about it. And so when I um, 
got home, I updated that, and I jumped in real quick because uh, I don't know if the listeners remember, but I actually started a second playthrough this year. I got pretty far. I was I was I was doing where I was going from every. I was basically looting everywhere, every area on the map. I wasn't just playing it just to beat the game. I was going everywhere, every question mark, everything. Um, and then I kind of just started focusing on the story, and then about halfway through the story, I stopped. Well, I just jumped back into that to see how it looks, how it plays, everything. It is running a little sluggish at times, but I also think that's because I'm downloading updates for other games. So I think once those games are done downloading, I think it will run better. That, that's just me guessing. Um, but as far as looks, it's pretty on par with my uh, uh, PC version. Um, hmm. I would actually have to do a side by side, but that's the point. Is that's it impressive. looks good enough for me to say? Like for instance, I was talking about Battlefront Two, how it didn't look good on the Xbox One. I don't even need a side by side. I know it does not look as good as anything I've played on PC. The Witcher Three. If somebody was like, "Yeah, I'm playing this on PC," I would totally believe them. And then if I found out it was on the PS4 Pro, I'd be impressed. So if you have a PS4 Pro and you have a 4K TV. Do play The Witcher 3 again because you will be impressed. And by the way, the reason why this is cool news, because a lot of games are getting pro updates, this is a, a game that was announced that it was not going to get updated. So I think they were secretly planning on updating this and they wanted to surprise the fans because that's what they do. They are a very good developer that likes to give things to us for free. Um, and they like to surprise us, so I think this is something they decided to do. They're like, you know what, with the Xbox One X coming out, let's just update this game that's still being played by a ton of people. Um, and I fully expect the One X version will look just as good. I do not think it will look better. I just think it will be on par with the Pro, mainly because I think that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to do one upgrade and put it on both uh, of the... Uh, the One X in the Pro systems, um, gotcha. but anyways, that's that's all I'm cool. playing right now. Besides the normal stuff, still playing Destiny Two and all that. But I just want to talk about anything new and uh, check those games out. They're all good. And that is your 4K life update with Derek Teague. Yes. Oh, one last thing. Battlefront Two. The reason I'm playing it is because I pre-ordered it. You can though, and I will download it on the PS4 Pro and PC. This weekend, I believe it's open beta. So if you did not pre-order the game, but you are curious if this is something you would want to play, do download it and check it out and see if you like it. So I will be doing that cool. as well. Very cool. I mean, it's that time of year, right? Where if a big game is not coming out, then it's the beta for the next big game coming out. So it is that time of year. Yeah, there's plenty make of sure stuff. You guys, make sure you guys are checking it out. Yeah, make sure you check... Excuse me, the respective online stores for whatever systems you own, because there's already some sales popping up here and there that are pretty good, and of course betas and some pretty good pre-order deals. There's a lot of good stuff there, and I will second this, even though I'm not a PC gamer. Green Man Gaming, and really, of course, as you guys know, things like Humble Bundle and even just keeping an eye on Steam, you guys will find ridiculous deals on the PC games. Uh, that's the one thing I'm jealous of with PC. In addition to maybe maybe the visuals are a little better. Yeah, I didn't even well a little better but Dude. the money you save on software purchases is undeniable so yeah and well what i wanted to argue. tell you is um i don't know if i mentioned it but the humble bundle like monthly i never i never ordered that before and i decided to order it and i got rise of the tomb raider so i paid 12 bucks to get rise of the tomb raider and then i get to unlock another six or seven games in the next day or two so for nice. twelve bucks, I got a guaranteed game that I wanted on PC, and then I'm getting I think it's one, two, three, four, six more games that are gonna unlock in one day. So that would dang, be cool. yeah, that's. They'll probably all be indie yeah. trash, but I can justify the twelve dollar purchase <laughs> purchase just on that on that one game. So I won't get pissed. Well, that's good. I'm happy that you won't get pissed about that. All right. Well, that uh, there's your 4K life I, update, I, you guys. I just, I'm just playing golf story. I mean, that's so, what I do. So I'm here to give you whatever <laughs> indie Switch updates you need, and Derek's here to give you your 4K life needs. 4K you know what? Life. If you think about it, that is why we make such a great team, is because I cover the garbage and you cover the gold. And Ambiguously trash duo. That's what we're <laughs> called. All right, I'm on board. Yeah, the ATD. Sure. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's, that sounds good. All right. Well, so that's that's what we're playing. That's the stuff that we recommend that you play, whether it's Golf Story or whether it's spend a million dollars on a PC so you can have five more Ps for your games. You could do that if you want. Five more Ps. Now you're vexing me. <laughs> <laughs> just see, I'm just trolling Derek live here on our recording. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's talk a little bit about console exclusives for the year. So yes, I'm a nerd. Yes, I like my spreadsheets because they help us see information and break it down a little easier. But in this case, there was only one way to break down this info. There was not one definitive site that I could find that had a really good, here's how many exclusives are out on each system. Here's how many games that are combos for just two out of the three main systems. Uh, or with the handhelds or mobile or PC. And so I still don't have that definitive list, but I'm trying to compile one myself a little bit just for our conversations. And so I've got one that I've pieced together with a combination of websites. Of course, Wikipedia is a nice place to start, but it's not always reliable, as you guys know, and it's not always up to date. So using that with things like Game Informer, IGN, and Metacritic to just kind of get an idea of what games are coming out where. Um, this is how I ended my work day today. I wrapped up work. It was about 4.30 and I had about 45 minutes till I needed to get home for dinner. So I was done with work and I went ahead and jumped in and started working on this. And then I just finished it just now while Derek was talking. So I called him rude earlier. I'm actually the rude one. So, uh, so here's what we're looking at. Um, as I'm looking at these totals along the bottom, it's fascinating to see number one, how many games I've got on this list. I tried to eliminate a ton. I lim I tried to eliminate compilations, you know, like, uh, the Crash Insane Trilogy. That's off the list, right? Yeah. I try to get rid of remasters or re-releases like um, uh, like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or even Pokemon Tournament. Those couple of Switch games like that. Those are off the list. Um, I tried to, to delete the multi-episode games and just let one of those represent that game. You know, so like Walking Dead or Guardians of the Galaxy. So I tried to trim this list down a little bit. I guarantee you it's not perfect. But based on what I'm seeing here, let's talk through the total numbers for each console. And I want to hear what you think, Derek, about the number of exclusives that I'm seeing for each console. So first, let's go through straight up exclusives that only appear on this console. And it's OK if they appear on PC or their handheld counterpart. For example, yeah. if it's on the PS4, Vita, and Windows, you know, on our PC, I'm counting that as a PS4 exclusive. I agree. Just so with you that. guys know. Um, if it's on the if it's on the Switch, and one example here is it's on the Switch and 3DS would be Fire Emblem Warriors. I'm counting that as a Switch exclusive. So just so you guys get an idea of of how I'm gauging these, okay? So let's start with the PS4 first because it by far has the most standalone exclusives outside of PC. It has 91 that I found that on this list. 91 games in 2017 that are only on the PS4, possibly also on Vita Mobile PC. That, that's crazy to me. That's a ton of games. Now, is that number surprising to you? I mean, I might have a few mistakes here. Let's say I'm off by 10. That's still 80, right? That's still 80 totally exclusive games. What is that number? I mean, what do you think about that number when you hear it? I think they released too many Japanese games. That's what I think. No, I think it's it's Sony doing a good job of pumping out game after game. Now, not all of them are good, but I can say that most of the main ones that they release that they're trying to attract buyers to their console are good, legit, great games. Some of them are, we're going to talk about in the Game of the Year list. So I think it's an impressive number, um, and I hope they continue to do it i think it is too i mean if i'm let's pretend like i wasn't uh, that i were an xbot right and i had that kind of number backing up my console i wouldn't really care that let's say over half of them are games like oh let's grab an example here dot hack slash gu last recode or um cayman rider cymex fighters i have no idea what that is will anyone ever play that is that something that's no not really but technically, it's only coming out on the PS4 this year. It's a PS4 mm -hmm. exclusive. So I think it's worth giving them credit for putting out a wide variety of games. Uh, everything from Tales of Berseria um, and some of these very, very unknown. I mean, Vita has a couple of exclusives, too. There's one that's called Tokyo Tattoo Girls. I mean, those are some of the games that are coming out for these two systems. But to their credit, uh, of, course, of course you do, right beside uh, Tokyo Mirage or Massage mm -hmm. Sessions. Um, but anyway, all that to say, 
PS4 dominated the exclusives. And we'll talk in a minute how they did when it comes to just PS4 and Xbox One games. They did really well there, too. And they had a handful of games that only came out on PS4 and Switch as well. So, But there's PS4. Now let's talk about the second place contender um, overall in console sales this generation. And that's the Xbox One, right? That's the mm-hmm. typically the main competition with Sony. I may have done bad math here, and I may have missed a few, but I think I was pretty complete in getting the actual exclusives for the Xbox. I'm including games that are also on PC, that are also on, you know, uh, mobile, or whatever. There's not that many. Um, yeah. This totals up to eight. Hmm. Am I, I might be missing something. So let me, let me tell you the ones that I'm seeing. I won't do that with PS4. There's too many. There's a game in December called Hello Neighbor. It's only coming out to Xbox One and PC. There was uh, Forza Motorsport 7. Came out uh, just yesterday, right? Um, mm-hmm. Cuphead. So there's three. Scrolling back up through here now. Let's see. Oh, hang on. Uh, Tacoma, which is also on PC, but I believe I believe is an Xbox exclusive, at least a timed exclusive. Uh, Fable Fortune. That's up to five, I think. Hang on, this spreadsheet's going super slow while I'm scrolling up. Of course, I know we've got Halo Wars 2. Um, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I guess that one shouldn't count, right? That's a Isn't that a remaster? Uh, Ultimate, that's on the PS4. Is it? Oh, it must have just now released on Xbox. Mm-hmm. That's why it's on this list. All right, so make that seven. <laughs> that's really sad. Yeah. I, just, I just eliminated... Some of their games. All right. Uh, yeah, and Halo Wars 2. So, again, not a ton of games. Uh, oh, and, and a game called Rise and Shine, which I believe is still only on PC and Xbox as well. Came out in uh, January. Um, yeah. But the, the good news for Xbox owners. So, I know that I do a lot of Xbox One bashing. Like, there's times when I look at my purchase and say that was kind of a waste. Like, I loved Ori, and I really enjoyed Gears 4. But other than that, most of everything else I played, I could have experienced somewhere else. Um, just in general. That being said, that being said, um, if you're an Xbox One owner, you still have. I'm trying to get to the final count here. I believe it's 83 or 82. Um, 82 games that came out this year that were only on Xbox One and PS4, possibly on PC in some of these cases. So you still had a ton of games, major yeah. releases from Battlefront Two. Shadow of War, and the list goes on. You had Mass Effect. You had a ton of games that still came out. You just didn't have a lot of games that you could look at and say, this is yet another reason that I have this console over the others. So, whereas I would look at PS4 and say, wow, that's a lot of games. Even if only a third of those are worthwhile, even if only one-tenth of those is worthwhile, you still have more worthwhile games than the Xbox One has total games. Yeah, I think... I think with the, like the PS4 exclusives, I and I'm a person that buys a lot of games. I probably bought maybe I'll buy like ten of them out of the ninety or whatever yep. you said. Yep. Um, I'm somewhere in that same and range. And then too, on the Xbox One, I'm not even gonna buy Cuphead probably ever. And so Forza Seven is the only one I'm gonna buy. I didn't buy Halo Wars. I'll buy it when it's like ten bucks, but I won't pay more than that. Well, so, and shout out to uh, Jesse White. He actually let me borrow Halo Wars 2, which is as soon as I wrap up Golf Story, if I can get that finished before uh, Shadow of War, I do plan on playing Halo Wars 2 because I need to get some Xbox game, it, gaming in. But I think once Shadow of War, I think you're done. That's why I I, even though yeah. I, like, I was like, Forza I can justify more because it's more of a casual, just fun game. But, then I'm, but right after I bought Battle Chasers, I'm like, yeah, I really want to play this game. Oh, shoot. I even said it to myself as I was making the post on Fuck I'm like, Shadow of War comes out in like six days. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm probably going to start it, play an hour, come on the show next week, look, so good, I love it, and then never play it again. You know, there's actually, you just reminded me, there's actually a reason you should be happy we're recording now and not this coming weekend. Because if we recorded this weekend... I'd be ranting and raving about how much fun I'm having with Stardew Valley on my Switch because that's coming out Ugh. tomorrow on the Switch, and I can't wait. So I'm really excited for that, too. Yeah. You know, know, and before, for the listeners, before we started recording, Tim and I 
kind of talk for a little bit. And I told him, because I pick on him a lot. And he, well, he picks on me. Um, <laughs> but I pick on him probably more. And I was like, oh, you know, I, just, I want you to know that I do love you. But I legit, like, hate your gaming purchases. <laughs> like, I get angry over some of your decisions. And so, right. yeah, Stardew Valley, man, that's worse than Golf Story. Golf Story, I'm on board with. I get it. Stardew Valley, I don't get that game. I do not get at all. I don't understand people are like, this game's so much fun. It's ugly. That's one reason, in case people can't see my hand. It's ugly. It's planting stuff. Like, really? Like, that's what you want to do with your video game time? You want to plant stuff? (laughs) Hey, just listen, just so you know, that sentiment you just shared, 100% reciprocated, my friend. (laughs) There's a lot of love on this podcast and yet a lot of disrespect for the other person's choice of not only At games least, to play, but our game of the year choices. Uh, yeah, if you guys haven't, go back and skim place. through some of those. Listening to our reactions to each other's picks, there's maybe there might be 50% crossover where we're like, okay, good pick. All right. Maybe, maybe half of our games. But then there's at least another half where we're like, oh my, that seriously is in your well, top? Like last year was funny because I was – complaining about mafia 3 left and right in the beginning of playing it and then by the time i finished it i liked it you like you saw the faults but you liked it the entire time so when i did my top 10 i'm like he'll be happy that i have mafia 3 this high i ended up putting it real high you actually had it kind of low and i'm like yeah yeah i had it like in the your eight your like final verdict was i liked it but i didn't love it i'm like I'm the one that complained the whole time, yet I had it like in my four spot or five spot. Yeah, yeah, Mafia Three. I'll tell you, it uh, it gets repetitive. All right, so so that's what we've got for the Xbox One. Again, not to bash Xbox One gamers, you actually have a ton to choose from. If that is your console of choice, you technically have right around 89 was, new games, new games this year that you can play on your system, and they're going to look gonna great. I was going to say, play great. Just to to be clear. As gamers, even if you just bought one console and that's all you bought, you always have something to play. Absolutely. I mean, we, this, yeah. this, this, this gaming has become so big that when people are like, there's nothing on Xbox or there's nothing on PlayStation. Even when I'm in Unlock, they try to bash like PlayStation stuff. I'm like, you guys Which are is hilarious. so <laughs> stupid. Yeah. You guys, when you get in these console wars, you forget about third party. You act like they don't exist which right. is dumb. They always remember third party, by the way, when they talk about Nintendo. Third party doesn't count on Xbox or PlayStation, but it counts towards Nintendo. It's oh, almost like a political party. debate at this point, you know? It's oh, just yeah. like you're, it's they, very partisan, you know? Yeah. It's like you always hear the saying, numbers don't lie, right? But the thing that they never follow up with, and this is the truth, it's how you interpret those numbers that is the lie. Like, you can put numbers out there, but then the way people read those numbers off is where you find the lies. You find that in politics, and you'll find it in in gaming debates. And I always just roll my eyes because I'm just like, this is the dumbest crap anyways. But anyways, back to what I was saying. Even if you buy one console, you got plenty to play. Totally. Let me do my okay sign to make sure the white power people are happy. Plenty to play. Get There's mad. plenty to play. You're right. And you're right. Numbers don't lie. That's why I use spreadsheets. Okay. So we and then also... you interpret them falsely because you're a liar. I do interpret them. Whether or not it's falsely is up for debate. Um, so right now, <laughs> again, trying to remove a lot of the re-release stuff for Switch. I, I might have missed one or two. I am counting 18 new exclusives on the Switch that I believe are exclusive through the end of this year. Some of them might show up on other systems next year. Many of them are already on PC or mobile or 3DS, um, but uh, but they're, you can't play them on PS4 or Xbox One. That's the bottom line. So there's 18, I believe, and I didn't count things, like I said, Pokemon Tournament. I don't think I counted Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, so I got rid yeah. of some of that stuff. Um, But everything from ARMS to Splatoon 2, uh, Legend of Zelda, Mario Odyssey, Fire Emblem Warriors, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, those are all in there. In addition to a surprisingly large selection of indie games, um, everywhere from really bad ones. um, Shoot, there was one called uh, Something in the Night Sky, one of the worst games of the year. We'll talk about that at our worst games of the year. I never played it, but it has some of the lowest scores. So just because it has exclusives doesn't mean they're all good. Let me be very clear. Um, yeah. Some of them are really bad, all the way up to games that I think are 
just these super charming gems like Golf Story. So Nintendo Switch has done a good job, I think, at building out a nice catalog of exclusives in their first, what are we? Th- we will have only been nine months in. By the time this calendar year ends, it'll be nine months of the Switch. And right now, it looks like about 18 console exclusives. Very, very good job by the Switch. So I'm impressed by that number, at least, based on what we thought Nintendo was going to be pumping out. So there you go. All right, let's also look at shared games with the Switch and Xbox One. Again, this doesn't count stuff like Thumper since that came out last year, but All right, I'm only on. counting... Uh, I got to ask you something because I'm, yeah. I'm actually looking at your numbers. I may have caught you in a lie. So Uh-oh. for the PS4, you said there was 93 exclusives. 91. Now you have your numbers... 91. You have yeah. 25 true exclusives, 13 Sony exclusives. Oh, no, no. The, those notes are old because I, ha- I wasn't finished yet with those notes. Look at the You're, spreadsheet. Um, yeah, here we go again. He's lying. Yeah, look at the spreadsheet. Yeah, <laughs> you did. You did. You did, did you, catch me. Did you hear him, listeners? Well, oh, those numbers are old. <laughs> those numbers are outdated. Don't look, Don't look at really those. Don't look at those. There's really only nine PlayStation Four exclusives, but he just started adding up fake numbers. It's fake news. Don't even <laughs> listen to it. Get him out of here. Oh, boy. All right, so, yes, there's 91. Many of those might be timed. Many of those I may have miscalculated one way or the I other. I think we I'll should do that. a year but. in special where I dress up as Donald Trump and you dress up as Clinton. And no. we do our Game of already, the Year special. Already a hard pass on that one. Hard pass. <laughs> No, you have to wear you. a dress, too. No, thank you. All right. Uh, <laughs> games that came out on both PS4 and Switch, yeah, such as right. SteamWorld Dig 2. There's four of those, and then one on, on Switch and Xbox One. So a few games that go across platforms. That doesn't include stuff like Minecraft and whatever else came out on Switch. So that's pretty good. And then here's an interesting one. There are 26 games that I can count that are coming out on all three platforms. You know, stuff like uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2 that comes out this fall. Uh, NBA 2K18, Snake Pass. There's, there's a pretty wide variety of games that drops on all systems this year and and LEGO Worlds. And I think that's really cool to see we're kind of starting to shift back towards three consoles getting support across the board from third party. And I hope that trend continues. But I think that 26 numbers are pretty good when that means, like Derek said, if you only own one of these consoles, chances are pretty good you're getting to play a lot of the major games. Of course, if you own a Switch, you're going to miss out on some of the brand new, massive, uh, graphically powerhouse type games, of course. So yeah, just keep that in mind. That being said, you'll be able to play a lot. You'll be able to play a lot of them. Uh, a couple quick notes. Uh, PSVR, I'm seeing 17 games, 3DS, 18. The Vita with 39 uh, mobile games, forget about that number. There's obviously hundreds of mobile games. Um, this list was mo- mainly accounting for mobile games that are also on console. So that's about seven. But that number is way, way higher, of course, for total mobile games. PC is an interesting one. Um, this tally right here has 183. That, of course, is not counting every single indie game that comes out on Steam every day. It's just counting most of the games that somehow go across most platforms or at least deserve some attention. Like Divinity Original Sin 2 is on that list. So if you're a PC gamer and that's all you've got, chances are pretty good you're playing basically everything. <laughs> Even yeah. Neo comes out for you this fall on PC. You know, Destiny 2 is coming out for you this fall on PC. You already pretty got Neo. Really excited PC. about that. You got all the Xbox stuff on PC. The only thing you're missing out on is the Nintendo first party stuff on PC. That's really the only thing that you're missing. So So what do you think overall, Derek, about how each company is doing with exclusives and uh, and and do you think I guess there's a bigger question too. Do you think this is a fair way to gauge how a company is doing to look at the console exclusives? Uh, no, because I think Xbox is actually doing fine. I'm talking as a company um, and as a business. They're selling good. Um, I know they're losing to the PlayStation. Everybody knows that. But uh, I think they are still on pace to beat out the 360s numbers with the Xbox One. I could be wrong on that. Which, by the way, is impressive. People need to yeah. remember that. That is... Yeah. That's yeah. Again, that's what I'm talking about. Games... Game, keep wanting to say games media, but I don't mean the news. I just mean, like, games in general uh, and console gaming has gotten so huge that... Uh, these numbers are always just until it starts to fall off, which I do think there will be a point where it does. But uh, these numbers are just going to keep getting higher. So P- 
people will look at the Xbox One, and I know there are gamers, I've seen them do it, with the way they talk about it, they act like it's a fail, and it's really, it's it's doing fine. Um, but if you look at a year like this, and this is coming from a guy who, in the past, has always prefer, preferred Xbox, but if anybody pays attention to me, they know I'm pretty unbiased and that I really like all three, like a lot. Right. Um, yeah. But as even a I, ex- who kind of hate you, have to admit that. Yes. Yes, you got it. You're just a switch bot, but I am a true unbiased. I will not opinion. deny that. Everything Halo. on Switch. Halo Five on Switch, guys. Please, can we just? Can... Hey, no, it's Microsoft already put out a game on Switch. Did you know this? Uh, Minecraft. Yeah. Microsoft's going to put that out. Here's what I think. I am getting derailed, but Minecraft's going to keep being supported on every... I think Minecraft 2 is going to end up being a console exclusive. And That'd PC. be interesting. Console, it'll probably be Xbox One or whatever system it is, only as well as mobile and PC. You're right about yeah, that. Yeah, it'll be something like that. They it'll be on mobile. It'll be on mobile and tablet. Yeah. All right, so what? getting back to what I was saying, do I think all the... I think right now... The the one I was worried about the most was Nintendo going into this year, and I have said it plenty of times on this uh, podcast, and I'm going to say it again. First of all, super excited that they are successful so far with the Switch. Second, I am really, really, really happy that they have gone above and beyond this year and releasing games and keeping my personal attention, and I know a lot of other people would agree with me, um, attention to the Switch. Like, I am predominantly now a PC, Xbox, PS4 gamer, but I still go to my Switch quite often because I'm like, well, I can only play this game on the Switch. I can only play this game. Or, hey, I'm going to a soccer tournament this weekend. I'm going to take my Switch, and I'm going to play my exclusives there. So they've done a great job of keeping me interested. Like, for instance, I have a spreadsheet that tracks everything that's coming out. Um, And the three games, I've I've already paid off a lot of games, so I'm only counting the ones that I haven't paid off yet. The three games that I have left to buy that I'm, like, like have to get are Mario Odyssey, Fire Emblem, uh, Warriors, or whatever it's called, I forgot now. Yeah, Fire Emblem Warriors, you got it. Yeah. And then um, Xenoblade 2. Those are three games that if they were coming out on the PS4, Xbox One, PC, I would have to have them. So I'm definitely going to get them on the Switch. So Nintendo was the one I was most worried about. And to me, they've not only surpassed it in how successful the Switch has been so far, but also they've surpassed my expectations for any of their exclusives. I mean, I went into buying the Switch mainly sold on one game. Oh, you have Zelda Breath of the Wild, and it's the better version of it, and I can take it on the go? Sold. Yeah. Again, I'm not a hard sell, but the point is, is that's all they had to show me, and then I could have ended no, up with you're, another You're about Wii as easy as they come, let's be honest. But Thank you. And we aren't talking about video games anymore, but No, I we are right. not. <laughs> and I just called you baby, Hillary Clinton. This, hey, this has been probably one of the most, uh, probably one of the gayest episodes that we've done, if I had to be honest. There's, Possibly. Can you, since you do all our special effects, can you like shoot rainbows behind me as I talk? Yet Especially again. if I bring up yeah. Sasan. Oh, look, Sasan. Go, Sasan. Can you just shoot rainbows up, please? All right. So anyways, um, Nintendo was the one I was most worried about, but they've done a great job. So they are, to me, they look good. They're, they're looking good. PS4, we've already talked about with the amount of exclusives they have. Their sales are the highest compared to everybody else. So we all know they're looking good. Um, the Xbox One, I'm not worried about their... I'm not worried about them on a business standpoint as far as, are they going to go out of business? I'm more worried about them on... I'm not liking the direction. And again, keep in mind, I'm not really overly hard on a lot of these consoles... Uh, or I should say a lot of these video game manufacturers on, oh, you know, you've got to release 10 exclusive. I'm not like that. But I am looking at, like, a year like this. The number says five true exclusives. Um, Of those five, I said I cared about, what, one? Yeah. And even the one that I said I cared about, I was on the fence for. I wasn't like, got to have it. And that was Forza 7. You know, like Shadow of War. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was Forza 7, right? Yeah, Forza 7. 
Shadow of War, I know it's not exclusive. I'm only bringing it up because it's the next big hype game. That game was announced. I knew I was buying it. There was no questions about it. Forza 7 was announced, and I was like, do I really want another Forza game? That's kind of how I feel about Microsoft right now. I'm a big Gears fan. I'm a big Halo fan, but they don't hate me anymore. I enjoy them when they come out, and usually about a week before they come out, I get real hyped. I'm like, can't wait to play Halo 5, or I can't wait to play Gears of War 4. But there's no new IPs that are really lighting a fire for me personally with Xbox. And some of the stuff they were announcing that looked like it was going to excite me because I was like, that's a new IP. They've screwed it up. They've either canceled it or it's just been delayed or whatever the issue might be. Like, I feel like I've known about Sea of Thieves for like 10 years. I know that's an exaggeration, but I do really feel like, yeah. as somebody who doesn't track that game, but I'm like, I'm interested in it. I felt like that game was supposed to come out this year, and then everybody was like, no, it's a 2018 game. I'm like, Which is crazy, they, because I remember this was a long time ago. They had some fun behind-the-scenes things yeah, with Rare. Yeah, they've been talking right? about it so much. Crackdown yeah. 3, the first time I saw like the trailer at E3, the first trailer, I know it's another sequel, but I was like, that was, you gotta keep in mind, that was a franchise I thought was dead, because Crackdown 2 was pretty much garbage. And so when I saw that first trailer, I was hyped like it was a new IP. I was like, yes, they're bringing back, you know, a franchise I like, and it's gonna be bigger, better, and badder. What do they do? Delay it. And I gotta say this real quick. How can you delay that game? I know everybody's gonna be like, you know, the delay's good. It, it makes the game better. I get that. I'm not dumb. I'm speaking from a business standpoint. How can you delay that game when you have the One X coming out? I lost a lot of excitement for the One X losing Crackdown Three. Yeah, a lot. I've of already people. looked. Yeah, I looked. I already looked on eleven seven when the One X comes out. There's like two games launching, and only one of them is exclusive to the Xbox One X. Which I don't know. Did you talk about Tales? That Tales game? Uh, no. Is that I, one I, of that the might exclusive? not be on my list here. Actually, let me see. Yeah, anyway, that should be an exclusive. But anyways, you get the point. I have no excitement for that game. I might buy it. It's a $30 game. But yeah. really, that's what you're going to launch a new... I know it's still part of the Xbox One family, but it's a new console that you're supposed to have that's graphically superior to all consoles. And what game do you have to show it off? A freaking cartoon game for kids. Dude, that's, what that's exactly what off. PS4 did. It worked for them. Knack was a hit. And it worked great for them. Come and on. if Knack was the only game that came out, I would be complaining. But yeah, I agree. I don't know. So yeah, yeah, for me, as somebody, again, big Microsoft supporter, love Xbox, love Phil Spencer, I am getting tired of it. I'm tired of watching like this past E3. I gave it a decent grade. I think I gave them a B- minus and the PS4 a B-. Minus. And there was some stuff that excited me, but none of it was... It's only coming to Xbox. Yeah, yeah. Not you know, I temporary exclusive. Not uh, a, a third party game. I'm talking just a game that's coming to Xbox One and PC because that's essentially the same thing now. And yep. there was nothing, nothing that excited me. You know, I as I look at this, I think this is actually truly a nuanced conversation when you try to figure out which console, which company is doing it better. Um, and mm -hmm. I know that's also in and of itself, people would say it's a flawed question. Okay. But it's an interesting one. I think it makes for interesting conversations. So sorry if it offends you that we're even asking it, whatever. Um, I, I do think it's a very nuanced conversation though. And I think exclusives is one, it's a very important one, but is only one factor. So we're talking about that today because it's something that we haven't really done a tally of exclusives like this before. We've mentioned it in passing how PlayStation has so many more than Xbox does this year and and how in, in past years Xbox just killed it in the fall and PlayStation had hardly anything and so we've talked about this before um, but we rarely mm -hmm. break it down by the numbers like this and so I think it is one factor it's an important factor but there's so many more everything from the online infrastructure the actual UI when you load up the system how quick does it load can you jump to the home screen and swap between games how quick does it load up when it's in sleep mode 
what kind of online features are available there for you? Um, what kind of game sharing can you do, whether it's something they want you to do or not? What's available on each system really makes a difference. How accessible is it? How user-friendly is it? What kind of sales does their yeah. store have? There's so many factors that play in here. Does it have any portability is a new factor that Nintendo introduced with the Switch. Does it have the portability and the really customization that the Switch does with all the different control options, which I was afraid when we first learned about the Switch, I had this little fear in the back of my mind. There's just too many options on how you can set up these controllers. It's going to it's going to come back to bite them. There's, it's just too many options. And it turns out it's actually some pretty smart options, and they're not that complicated. So um, I, I think each company has brought their own strengths to bear, but they also each have weaknesses in some ways, right? So right yeah. now we are seeing 2017 is a year. I don't think it's going to be very close. I think it's a year that PlayStation, Sony in particular, really wins in terms of the console kind of tug of war just in terms of exclusives um customer service yeah. the what's available on store the fact that they've got great third party the best third party support all those kinds of things but that doesn't mean that the other systems aren't good i just think ps4 is doing better than the others and exclusives is one part of that of course they're dominating in that area but it's just one part of that i think nintendo is winning in a lot of ways and i think xbox is doing a great job in a lot of ways too so it'll be interesting as we round the corner into the game of the year discussions because then it becomes less about which system and that's usually when a lot of people become well at least you and i i feel become a little less worried about which system we played on we're a little more system console agnostic at that point and we're talking PC, more about the PC. games the games themselves right so if it's on pc if it's on 3ds if it's on ps4 wherever it is we're able to just talk about the games themselves and so that's that's one thing i do look forward to but it is also interesting to figure out who's handling this console thing the best so exclusive wise ps4 is way yeah. ahead of the pack uh, out of these three systems um but give that nintendo not... time yeah we they're might catching see up. more they're catching up yeah because a lot of companies even said ah let's wait and see well next thing you know now you got bethesda jumping in head first into the switch uh you've got i think ea sports is being surprisingly slow i thought they would have pumped out a madden by now with the success this thing's had but what do i know but you know you've got do two we have other... any numbers though on fifa 18 i know it just we came don't out yet. september 29th i i i don't so. think that's 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 the problem i think is ea is going to see that it doesn't sell as well because it was pretty common knowledge that this game is lacking some features on the switch version which so they're kind of in my opinion shooting themselves in the foot right out of the gate if that's their gauge and yet they release a lesser product and they're going to use that to decide if they should release more products i just think that's a it's a well, self-fulfilling and, prophecy. And so, If we were running long, I wouldn't talk about this, but we're not, so I'm going to say it real quick. I will say, while I agree with you, and I've seen a lot of people, like especially in MVC, kind of complaining about, well, EA is just being EA. I think they were limited on time. Let's first of all say that. I don't think they went into this year going, well, Switch is definitely going to be a success, and we're going to put FIFA 18 on there. I think they went into it going, because they did support the Wii U, by the way, with FIFA, but they did an older version. I think they went into it with kind of plans, and then come March, they were probably like, wow, this thing's selling ridiculously good. Let's get our biggest franchise on there. I do think they were limited on time, and I do think there is still a selling point if you look at the Switch like I do. I do not look at the Switch as a home console. It is a home console. I do use it in my home. I do use it on my big t screen TV, so I'm not saying it doesn't have that ability. I'm saying when I consider buying a third-party game, since I own literally everything, the only way the Switch is ever going to win is if I say to myself, I want that on the go, right? Yeah. Yeah. And more than likely, sense. knowing me, knowing me, I'm going to own two copies. I'm going to own the main copy, and then I'm going to have my on-the-go copy So, for third party. So, the point I'm trying to make is, even though FIFA 18 is a lesser version of the one I'm playing right now on the Xbox One, which is a damn good game, by the way. Really good game. Um, I would say it's a superior um, on-the-go version or a mobile version. That's fair. Of that in and of itself is a feature worth... Me yeah, that in and of itself is a great feature, right? The mobility. That's what I'm saying. That's the selling yeah. point. Now, yeah. what I would have done if I was EA, and I know they're greedy bastards and they don't think this stuff through, 
is they should have sold this game for fifty bucks. That means if you mm. go to a game, uh, if you go to Best Buy, you buy it for forty. They really should have done that, and the reason why is they should have been honest with their customers instead of trying to deceive soccer moms. And they should have been like, "Look, this game is fifty dollars, and here's why: we took this out, we took this out. It's the same soccer game, but some of the stuff's missing, so we want to give you a little break and give you ten dollars off." Why not? Why not? Well, that, do that? Man, how good would that look on that eShop if that was forty nine ninety nine on the eShop? Man, that'd be yeah. that'd be pretty hard I'll to resist. You right if, now, you're, if you're a soccer fan and you like the newest rosters and all that kind of stuff, and you want to play soccer on the go on your new Nintendo system, yep. I would a forty nine ninety nine price right a forty nine ninety nine price point would be tough to turn down for most people. Let a, let alone with the Gamers Club Unlocked discount or something that you might get elsewhere. So, yeah, you're you're right about that. Fifty dollars would have been. A pretty brilliant move, but alas, they did not do that. All right. Well, that kind of wraps up our console exclusives evaluation for 2017. I realize 2017 isn't over, but at this point, we're in October. We have a pretty good idea of what the uh, console release schedule is going to look like. We might have one or two more surprises coming our way, but it's not going to be anything super big. Um, it might skew these numbers a little bit one way or the other. But you guys get the point. We really wanted to just break down how has this year been looking for each console. And uh, overall, like Derek said before, um, I totally agree. This has just been a really great year for games. And really any console you own, any combination of consoles you own, you got plenty to play. And lots of good stuff to play. Just like uh, this little game right here. This one. Look at that. Look at that game. Look how, look how amazing. Stop looking down at your phone. Look at this game. Come on. I'm not looking at that crap. Come on. <laughs> I was showing him Golf Story on a Switch. It's amazing. All right, guys. Thanks for listening this week, and uh, we'll touch base with you next week. Hopefully, by the time we record, uh, we will have at least had a chance to try Shadow of War a little bit. So the hope is that we will have a chance to give you our first impressions of that game. So have a great week. We will talk to you later. Who is your daddy? I am the father. You fathers will understand. My father taught me many things here. I got an idea. How about you all sit there quietly while I make dad noises? All right. Well, just put your top on. I mean, that's a start. <laughs>